Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Be sure you like this video, share this video, and you know what? Just go ahead and follow us on all of our social media platforms. Okay, everybody, let's do a quick recap. Last time I introduced you to the artifact known as the crucifixion bone of Givat Chaf Matar. I mean, it looks like nothing that I'd ever seen. I look over at the museum guy and I'm like, what is this? And he's like, ah, oh, yes, these are the remains of a crucified victim. I told you that it was found in an ossuary. While working at the site, they came across these bones that were placed inside of these ossuaries. So an ossuary is a box or chest that is used for storing human bones. And then I went into detail about how the artifact consisted of a heel bone. Let's talk about this bone. The nail is actually pierced through the right calcaneus bone AKA the right heel bone. An iron nail. The nail inside the bone is made of iron and measures approximately 4.5 inches. And some wood. Within this nail and bone combo, there were remains of wood. Girl, it's wood up in there too? Yes, girl, wood too. And then right at the end, I mentioned that there will be some type of connection to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Okay, y'all good? Let's get into it. Now the crucifixion bone of Givat Chaf Matar is not the crucified remains of Jesus Christ. I mean, because obviously Jesus rose. The tomb's empty, you know, so there's that. Mm. Hey, hey, yes. I know that's right. But since the artifact dates to the same time period and cultural background of Jesus Christ, this artifact becomes essential to informing our perceptions about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. But unfortunately, like I said in the last video, a lot of us don't even know that this artifact even exists. So all of our visual perceptions about the Roman crucifixion are based upon the imagery that has surrounded us for years. I mean, honestly, just think about the imagery that comes to mind when we talk about the crucifixion. Most often we see a man of European descent who is hanging on the cross. And instead of an expression of excruciating pain, he typically just has this woe is me type of look on his face. Yeah, crucifixion was not a, a Sunday event. It was brutal in every way. When we get to the piercing of the hands and feet, we see the nail pierced in the palm of the hand and then the nail pierced on the feet with one foot on top of the other. But here's the thing. Numerous researchers and scholars have pointed out the fact that piercing in the palm of the hand would have been impossible. And there's actually been a study um, done with cadavers of how this worked and uh, the kind of weight that would come on the, the spikes and things like that. A nail pierced hand can only hold 40 pounds. And we all know that a grown man is more than 40 pounds. This, for example, is a replica of a crucifixion nail. How it would work is it'll be driven through the wrist here. Wouldn't go through the palm as we often think, because that would, there's no bones here. And your weight will rip it right out. So it would have been driven in like that into the wood. And as it penetrates through, it would go in about that much. The reason it stays out this far is so the individual, the victim can't pull himself off it because if they try, they've got a lot more, even if they get a pull away from the wood itself, there's a lot more way to go. They're gonna have to go through. And secondly, you don't wanna drive this all the way through the wood if you're the Romans, because then you're gonna have to draw it out to take them down, right? Get them off the, off the crossbar. And so that's gonna be a long, long issue. So you want it more lightly like that, probably. When we talk about the feet, looking at the crucifixion victim of Grivat Chav Matar, the crucified victim's feet would not have been nailed with one foot on top of the other. What this artifact shows us is that the feet would have been nailed to the wood beam separately, with each foot nailed individually to one side of the wood beam or the other. What actually happened was his feet were placed on either side of the upright and the nail driven through this way and this way. Now we understand if you're spread like that, you even have less ability to raise your body up to breathe. So when he's being crucified, this victim, 
What's going to actually kill him is the inability to breathe. He's going to have to ray all the time. He's going to have to rake himself. And eventually, his diaphragm is going to seize up and he'll die. And breaking the legs means he can no longer raise himself up and he'll die like that. So this is one we now understand that much more clearly from that discovery. But can you imagine having a, a stake driven through your foot? We want to drive through the bone because that's where we get the maximum impact here. And then the pressure that gravity puts on you, on your body if it's, as it's hanging, and then putting on that, that stake, that's excruciating pain. Now you might say, hold up E, this might have been just how this victim's feet were nailed to the wood beam. But then I would say, let's talk about the fact that in 2021, researchers uncovered another crucifixion bone from the Roman period. Girl, another one? Girl, another one. Oh, okay. that's crazy. Oh, well. My mind is blown. That's crazy. Intriguingly, just this past year, we found a second victim. Now, this crucifixion bone was discovered in the United Kingdom in the village of Stanton. In Britain, where they're expanding a highway and they encountered this cemetery. This burial was a Roman inhumation in the second or third century, but still pre-Christian. It's still uh, in the Roman Empire. The Finstanton crucifixion bone has a two-inch steel nail in the right heel bone in a way that is very similar to what we see in the crucifixion bone of Givartov Matar. And again, same situation, through the heel bone, and they could not remove the nail. This is the second time now this has been found. And this shows us that this is the way crucifixions worked across the empire, not just in, in Judea. Before the discovery of the crucifixion bone of Givat Chaf Matar in 1968, there was no other physical support for Roman crucifixion. We only knew about the crucifixion from historical texts. So visually speaking, we were left at the mercy of our imaginations. So this gave us a great deal of insight into actually how crucifixion worked. Before that, we thought like all the art pictures you see of Christ, that his feet had been crossed together and the nail driven through. Like I say, we know now how he was set up. And that bone is what told us that and let us understand that more. I'm not here to vilify historical imagery of the crucifixion because in times past, people were only depicting the very small and the very limited view that they had been exposed to. What I want for you to see and what I need for you to see is that sometimes we all fall prey to allowing outside cultural expressions to affect and inform how we perceive and sometimes interpret biblical events. And that's the beauty of biblical archeology span because sometimes artifacts like the crucifixion bone of Givat Hav Matar come along and correct our misconceptions and help us to understand the events of the Bible, like the crucifixion, more accurately. And, and nowhere in scripture do we really get a, a modern day sort of cinematic view of what really happened on that cross and leading up to that cross. And so when you find something like this from, uh, from a region that we know was inhabited by, by people who were close to the biblical action, so to speak, and, and it is of that time period. Now you can begin to say, okay, this is similar to what Jesus went through. Because it lets us understand how people were actually physically nailed. We have descriptions, but we did never really knew it. There's no depictions in art of it until much later. But through this discovery, we now know precisely how a victim would be nailed to a cross and how Jesus probably was. You know, I, I always think of, of the text in, in Isaiah uh, 53, that, that he was bruised for our iniquities, chastisement of our peace was upon him, by his stripes we are healed. That's so pretty. It's so poetic. It dresses it up. And I'm not faulting Isaiah. He's writing it that way on purpose. But the reality of it, that's what archaeology can help us to get, can help us to understand. And, and uh, this bone is one of those things that when you look at that. I, I think it allows people to see the reality of it. This isn't just something that happened to Jesus. This isn't some special thing the church made up to make Jesus special. This happened to a lot of people. So for the Romans, this would have been a routine execution. For Christians, it's the most important one in the world. But for Romans, ah, and this still to see how mundane it was for them, which means this isn't made up. This is exactly what would have happened to someone accused of what Jesus was accused of. But the scripture says that bone supports, you know, that, that artifact supports that the scriptures describe Jesus' crucifixion accurately. It, it's not gonna, it's not going to make us believe. It ought not to make us believe, but it ought to help give context to our belief. I, I believe that Jesus died 
now I have some historical context as to what that means and what that looked like. Now, an archaeologist doesn't go out saying, well, Scripture says this, so I'm going to go find this. Archaeologist says, I'm going to go look, at, you know, and, and whatever I find, I find. But for those of us of faith, it's a bonus when we find something like this and say, wait, this gives credence to what the Scripture already says. I mean, what a tremendous find. always talk about how studying biblical archaeology makes the events and the people of the Bible feel more authentic. And I think one of the artifacts that really demonstrates this is the crucifixion bone of Givat Chaf Matar. And I'm not just talking about realness of the crucifixion in terms of historical doubt. I'm also talking about the realness of the crucifixion in terms of connection. When you see the nail in this bone, it just connects you to the crucifixion events in a much more real way. And this is why I share information like this and I teach information like this because I want people to connect with the Bible in a real way. And if not for anything else, just so you know.